welcome back to my channel. I've been really looking forward to sharing this video with you. Not only is it how to make a geode cake, but I have been working on growing my own sugar crystals to then use as the geode. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen on my stories that I had to try this a few times before I got it right, but I finally nailed it. And what's so amazing is it's so easy to make them. I actually find it really difficult finding rock sugar crystals in shops. So you can get things like this, and they're basically a clump of sugar, and usually they come on a stick. Um, for some reason, really hard to find here, but they are so easy to make. So I'm gonna show you how to make it. All you need is some water, sugar, and a stick, really. So what I've got here is just a normal bamboo stick, and I'm just going to dip it in some water, because now what I'm gonna do is roll it around in some sugar, and that's just gonna give it a nice coating of sugar on the stick, like this. Now, when I first tried this, I didn't do this stage, and it didn't work very well, and I think it's because these sugar crystals is what attracts the rock crystals to actually grow, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm just gonna leave this to the side to dry for a few minutes. And what I've got here is basically a really strong sugar syrup. So usually my sugar syrup that I soak cakes with are equal amounts of sugar and water, but this is actually one part water, three parts sugar. So I use 300 grams of sugar and 100 grams of water. So you can do any amount and you basically bring it to a boil until the sugar dissolves and then it forms a clear liquid and then you leave it to cool. That's another important point because if you don't leave it to cool and then you put this stick straight inside, the sugar melts off of it. So what I also have is a long container and all I'm gonna do is pour the sugar syrup into the container. Now I probably could have done with a bit more but I'm obviously just doing this to show you. And what I've got here is a peg, and I'm basically going to insert the stick, and what I want is um, a couple of centimeters or even an inch from the bottom, so it hovers. So rather than just sticking the stick in and leaving it, this is where the peg comes in handy. So I'm going to put it so it's nice and secure in the peg, and then I'm just gonna measure where the stick reaches if it's resting on top of the jar. So I think that's a good amount. And then all I'm gonna do is insert the stick into the sugar water. Check that it's not reaching the bottom, which it isn't, and that is it. And all you need to do now is wait. Now the sugar crystals start to form within a couple of days, but it's good to leave it for about five to seven days to get a really nice amount. So what I have here is one I've made earlier, which I've always wanted to say. Now, I actually thought this was gonna grow a lot more, but it hasn't. But again, I want to just show you what it's like after a few days. So I could probably leave this for another two days because the crystals are starting to form nicely, but I wanna show you what stage it's at now. And what might start to happen is that there's a surface of sugar, which you just need to break. It's almost like an ice sheet. And you can really see that the sugar crystals have started to grow along this stick. Now again, this hasn't been growing enough, so this might be a bad idea to put it back because I think you're meant to leave it completely undisturbed. Whoops. But um, I was desperate to show you this tutorial and I've got some prepared earlier anyway. I'll just put this back and pretend I never touched it. What you will achieve are large crystals like this. Now, some of these were from my experiments going wrong. These just developed on the surface, but because I'm putting them onto a cake, I'm gonna break them up anyway, so I didn't actually mind that they didn't stay on the stick. So as long as I'm getting some sort of clusters of sugar crystals, I'm fine with it. So I've got some smaller pieces and some larger pieces, and this is more than enough to decorate the cake with. So give that a go, and if you do have any tips, please send them to me, because for some reason, even though it's the most simple school level task, I could do everything else, but not properly grow sugar crystals. So if you do want to make a geode cake and you do want to make your own sugar crystals, then grow them in advance. But I'm gonna go and get my cake and start decorating it. So my crystals are grown, they're ready to use, I've got them to the side, but before I put them on the cake, 
I just want to cover the cake with a normal layer of buttercream. So what I've got here is my six inch cake and I've crumb coated it in my Swiss meringue buttercream and you may notice it is rather tall. It's because I've actually timed the cake recipe by one and a half. So my cake recipe, if you've made it before, you know how easy it is, but also it's easy to multiply. So if you times the recipe by one and a half and I've written the quantities below, you get a taller cake, that's it. So what I'm gonna do is actually coat the cake in white and then I've got some pink and purple and I'm going to create a watercolour effect. So I'm first going to go on with a layer of white buttercream around the edges. Give it a nice even coating of buttercream. And on the top as well. And now I'm going to go around with my side scraper to make those sides nice and straight. And because I'm going to add the colour, I'm not actually going to perfect the sides at this stage. And now I'm going to add bits of pink and purple, and I'm going to fill in the gaps that I would usually fill with white buttercream if I was keeping it white. But because I want to add the watercolour effect, it's a good excuse to add the colour now. So I'm going to see where it needs filling in with buttercream, and add little touches of pink. And then the same with the purple and a couple of bits on the top too. And now I'm going to spread the top out. And I'll go back with my scraper, and this is going to blend those pinks and purples together with the white. And it's nice to have the white still showing through, which is why I go on with a white layer before I add the colours. And you can obviously do any design you want with the buttercream, but I think that the blending of the pinks and the purples will go really nicely with the geode effect. So that looks really nice. I love the subtle blend of colours here. Now, because I'm not going to do drips on this cake, I want a really sharp corner at the top. So I'm going to put this back in a really cold fridge for the buttercream to harden so then I can cut it off and make some nice sharp corners. So the buttercream has chilled and it's nice and firm, which means I can cut off the buttercream to get those lovely sharp corners. So I've just got a knife here and slowly go around the very edge, cutting the excess buttercream away. And then if you need to, you can always just go around and correct some small bits with some buttercream and then just tidy up the corners again with the scraper. And then I'm also gonna just tidy up the cake board just by wiping any smudged buttercream at the bottom. It's always a good chance to clean your cake board when the cake's cold, just in case you hit it accidentally. You don't want any finger marks in it. So now it's time to create the geode effect. Now when I first did this, I thought it was really weird cutting into the cake, but You've got to do what you've got to do, don't you? So, you have to decide where you want this kind of geode crystal thing to come out from. So as usual, choose your front. To be honest, I'm happy with this cake on a 360 angle, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut here. Just a little tip, if there's a sneaky air bubble that's not going away, then cut it away. There's always room to hide mistakes. So, what I'm going to start doing is cut the very top. I'm going to cut a kind of triangle shape and it's better to pull out each piece as you cut just so it's clearer for you and now I'm gonna make the geode come down the side of the cake so I'm going to mark it firstly just so I know where I'm cutting it and now we'll use that as a guide to cut and once you've got that initial cut then you can decide if you want to reshape it or make it wider or maybe here kind of just open that first V like I'm going to do now. It's also quite nice seeing the inside of your cake, especially like me when I usually give my cakes away I never actually get to see the inside, but it's nice and even. 
And the last thing I'm going to do is just round the top because it's quite straight at the moment. So I'm just going to carve that a little bit more. So I've got a bowl of cake scraps that I'm going to snack on later. And now what I'm going to do is spread buttercream up the sides of the cake because this is where the sugar crystals are going to stick to. And it doesn't really matter what colour you go for, but I'm going to stick with a white because some of the crystals are going to stay white. And because sugar is kind of see-through, you might see some colour poking through if it's another colour. And you want enough buttercream in there, not just to make the cake airtight again and fresh, but the sugar crystals are going to stick to it, so it does need to be quite a thick layer. And as we spread the buttercream, you'll notice that there's going to be an edge of buttercream around this gap. Now, you can get rid of it if you want, but I'm actually going to keep it there and then paint it gold at the end. I think that's a really nice effect. So as long as it's not too much, it's going to look really lovely because it's almost like the sugar crystals are kind of escaping out the cake. And so I've got my sugar crystals here. Now, like I said, I did have larger chunks and you can go on with larger chunks, but I actually quite like the clustered look of smaller pieces. So I'm going to break some of these into smaller pieces and then it's just a case of sticking them on. And you want to try and fill as many gaps as possible so it's really packed in. And I'm almost going to create a border with the smaller pieces. So once the whole area has been covered with the crystals, I'm now going to put it back in the fridge for the crystals to have a chance to set against the buttercream because the next stage is painting over the crystals to create a shading effect and if it's still soft on the buttercream, then it might move around a bit. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of extra security. So I've had the cake chilling in the fridge for about 5-10 minutes and I can feel that the sugar crystals are nice and secure on the cake. So now it's time to shade the crystals, not only to make them stand out, but to give the illusion that it's really deep inside the cake, even though we've only cut out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is get some gel food colouring and put it in a container. And I've chosen purple because I feel that purple will stand out more than pink will. And what I've got here is some vodka. Now, the first time I did this, I actually did it with water, uh, thinking just to dilute the food colouring, but it ended up running down the cake and the water doesn't evaporate as easy as vodka does. I believe you can also do it with lemon juice. I haven't tried it though, so if it doesn't work, then I've given you my warning. So I'm just going to dilute it very slightly because I still want the colour to be dark and then mix that together. So now I'm going to put this dark colour in the middle of where the sugar crystals are because that's where the deepest part is. And as soon as I put the colour on, you can start seeing the textures of the crystals. Like that. So you can already see how just putting the dark colour in the middle gives the illusion how deep the crystals go into the cake. I'm now just going to add some more vodka into the colour, which is going to dilute the colour slightly more, mix that in, and then I'm going to go with another layer around the dark area, and it'll be a little bit lighter this time. So we're basically gradually lightening the purple as we come out the centre. Now some more vodka. Don't worry, you don't taste the vodka on the cake at all. So you're not going to get drunk off of this. Now I'm going to go around the medium shade of purple with this lighter shade. Because some of the buttercream is showing, I'm actually painting over the buttercream as well. And that's why it's important to get that buttercream nice and chilled before you do this. And then some more vodka. So you can see how dark it was to start off with. And now the purple's much lighter. And then the last layer, I want it as light as possible. And I'm going to go around the very outside of the sugar crystals with this lighter shade. So if the colour does start to leak, just get some kitchen towel and blot it off. And it shouldn't affect the buttercream underneath because the buttercream is nice and cold. 
So not only have I created this shading effect, I've also brought out the texture of the sugar crystals because it wasn't so apparent when the crystals were still clear. So what I want to do is actually give the crystals a gold border, but in order to do that, I'm going to have to refrigerate the cake one more time just to firm up the buttercream again. So to prepare the gold paint to go around the outside, you can either use ready-made gold paint, but I'm gonna do what I usually do and mix some luster dust with some vodka. Only a small amount of vodka this time and mix it until I get the correct consistency. So we'll start with that. And now all I'm gonna do is go around the outside of the crystals and paint the buttercream gold. I absolutely love how the gold looks on that. It's really pretty and it just really draws attention to the geode bit, which is what this whole cake is about. And also it means that you don't need to do so many other decorations on top of this. You can leave it how it is, but because it's me and I've also got some meringue kisses to spare, I'm gonna go on with a little bit of piping just at the back here and then a few kisses. But I don't think it means a lot because that's gonna be the center of the attention anyway. And I've also got some fresh edible flowers which always look gorgeous on top of the cake. And there you go, that is how you make a geode cake. So one of the most popular cake trends in the last year. And I've shown you how to make your own sugar crystals too, which is even cooler. If you do try it out, please tag me at George's Cakes on Instagram because I love seeing your creations. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, like this video and comment below with other suggestions of tutorials that you want to see. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you next time.